told you 10 years ago, TSA would be on checkpoints on the highway because it's all in their own documents. They're so arrogant, George, they think that we don't know. So this is an emergency worldwide alert to free humanity. I, I myself have moved to the country, built a wall, you know, put in the bunker. I never did this until just a few years ago because – there is a very good chance they're going to pull the trigger, and most of you listening, if they go ahead with this plan, it might be a year from now, it might be 10 years from now, the more we hold them back, the more we expose them, the more we speak about what they're doing, the more we back them off. But if we don't stand against them and get the word out now, if we don't have a renaissance of awakening against this tyranny, it is my sincere, hardcore analysis that the New World Order eugenicists are going to go – with their depopulation agenda, and I don't mean soft kill with the vaccines and the GMO and you know the birth defects and the cancer rates off the charts and the diabetes off the charts and the U.S. leading the world and all these diseases and our and our life expectancy dropping. I'm not talking about a debilitating long death. I'm talking about hardcore. So 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 this NDAA and all of this is part of this metamorphosis into a total control grid, but the control grid is not to protect us. It is to clamp us down and chain us down so these serial killers can have their way with us collectively. It's to trick us, isn't it? Yes. I mean, we're always told, George, you know the Homeland Security and MIAC documents, dozens of them have come out now, uh, where it was never about, quote, Muslim extremists. It was never about foreign threats. It was about libertarians, conservatives, gun owners, anti-war activists, Amish, uh, just anybody who's outside of the system, anybody who wants to audit the private Federal Reserve, anybody who is awake. And some will say, well, this is scary. I better go along with this. Folks, there's no going along with the new world order. There's no work for the system, and you're going to be spared by this. That's the big, that's the big lie. People say, well, Alex, you're telling us all this scary stuff. Are you trying to scare us? No. I know that your listeners, I know that the American people, the people listening all over the world, when faced with the hard facts, are going to make the right decisions to speak up and stand against this evil. And so that's why I tell you the truth is so that you are given a warning. You know, if a dam broke and a town was below, and in 10 minutes the town was going to be under 10 feet of water, uh, I wouldn't you know, call on my radio if I was up on the mountaintop and saw the dam break uh, down to the police station and say the dam has broken because I want to scare the police. I want to give them a chance to warn the people mm -hmm. to get to high ground, and they've got 10 minutes to do it. Well, in the space of political time, 10 years is like 10 minutes or more like 10 seconds. And don't say you weren't warned. How much of what I've broken down? How much of what I eat, sleep, drink, and, and 18 hours a day of work has come true so far? And, folks, it's not because I'm that smart. It's because I was contacted 15 years ago or so, and you know, when I was first getting on the radio just locally in Austin, by military, by police, then by police chiefs and others. And they said, do you know about what's happening? I, I was contacted 15 years ago by a nurse when I was only on in Texas, and you had a little bitty website. And – she said, I want to send you some documents. They take blood from babies at birth and put it in a DNA database. They tell the parents it's a blood test. I have the documents. It was only three years ago they declassified that government secretly takes the blood at birth and lies to you. you know, that's my point. I'm only a messenger. I'm, I'm nobody. I just happen to stumble into the truth and not brush myself off and ignore it. I happen to discover this. I mean I went to urban warfare drills. In, in, in 98, 99. Did you believe it then? When you go to an urban warfare drill in Hebron, Maryland, or Oakland, California, or Belton, Texas, and you witness Army and Marines with role players who are saying, I'm an American, don't take my guns, I have rights, and the Marines in Police State 2000 put a guy with a John Deere hat on. You know, they're drilling to kill basically farmers and people. They, they say, get on your knees, you're going to see an execution. And then the military affairs guy ran over and said, you're not allowed to videotape this, get out of here. It's all on tape. I mean, they are training to line up. You can, George, have the military call in some night and tell you. They'll call in. You can take hundreds of calls. 
of them telling you they're training to line Americans up. They're not just training to take you to a camp. They're training to line you up and blow the back of your head off. But how many in the military will say, we're not going to do this? When the, when the time comes, when push comes to shove, Alex, I think a lot of people in the military will step up to the plate and do the right thing. Well, I, in fact, you're absolutely right. I'm 100% sure they've done surveys like 29 Palms and upwards of 80% said they wouldn't. Most of the military says no. That's why Ron Paul gets more military contributions than all the Republican candidates and President Obama combined. It's 74% last month when I saw the latest numbers in December. 74% of all the military contributions to a presidential candidate go to Ron Paul, and that's why the system's so scared. But here's what they do. They test and question and drill all branches of the military, and they give them scenarios to make it sound like it's reasonable. Because in these scenarios, you know, the militia has been fighting back against them, and so they can't take prisoners. You know, they always give them a little excuse, but they take that 20 percent or so that say that they will, and then they build big cadres of them. They build this force, and then they put them into databases, and I've gotten the documents on this even from the Texas State Police. They then – tell the state, this is who you hire out of the military. And so they're actually hiring into the police force uh, the, the roughly 20% that have said they'll eat their own guts and ask for seconds. Jeez. All right, Alex, stay with us. We're going to come back and open up phone lines now. I know you've been waiting all night long. We've got Alex Jones to take your calls as we talk about the National Defense Authorization Act. And mark my word, probably within two weeks now, you'll probably get some of the mainstream to start doing a story on this. People like Alex Jones have followed this for a long time, and they are right on. Alex's websites are InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and we have it linked up for you at CoastToCoastAM.com. I'll be back in a moment with your calls and Alex Jones right here on Coast to Coast AM. On our next Coast to Coast program, we're going to take a walk on the paranormal side for a few hours, split show, and then later on, Rupert Sheldrake joins us as we talk about his work in telepathy. First interview for him on Coast to Coast since he was attacked and nearly stabbed to death several years ago. So get ready for that Coast to Coast show. When we come right back in a moment, we will take phone calls with Alex Jones on Coast to Coast AM. Alex, uh, we're looking at this other possible legislation as well that Congress is considering called the Enemy Expatriation Act, which would yank citizenship from Americans. I mean, when does it stop? Well, that's right. We have a Congress that's trying to give basically total amnesty to anybody that wants to come to this country or people who are here illegally. Uh, But now the very same crew of uh, miscreant senators have introduced legislation where the president, the Department of Defense, or their designates just yank your citizenship and all of your rights because they say so, something you can never do if you're born here, you have to renounce your own citizenship and it has to be certified. No, they now take it from you and then say they can deport you to one of their black sites or torture sites uh, in Romania or Egypt or Jordan or Saudi Arabia, and they actually say Uh, that they'll do things like this. And when they were countered, they repeated the same thing that uh, Santorum and Graham and others have said. Hey, we're already assassinating U.S. citizens extrajudicially. But, but, you know, at the start of the interview, George, and I know we're going to calls, you said they seem to be connecting all of it together and moving so quick Mm -hmm. right now. And you're absolutely right. Look at the Internet censorship bills. Look at everything that's happening. The American... Uh, you know, um, um, major medical associations, uh, the AMA Journal, it's up on InfoWars.com right now, just came out today and called for forced inoculations. They said, well, the public doesn't trust vaccines anymore, so let's just go ahead and start basically forcing it on people. We'll look at California four months ago. The, the governor signed legislation where they're going to inject school children without parental consent, and they actually went on CNN, state officials did, and defended it and said, it's not parents' business. I mean, this is law in California. So on every front, they're saying, 
We're going to have the TSA stick their hands down your pants and, and fondle Miss USA. We're going to uh, take your baby's diaper off. We're going to grab your uh, wife's parts. We're going to grab your body. We're going to put you in a microwave oven. Uh, we're going to set up highway checkpoints. We're going to secretly arrest you if we want. We're going to take your private property. The Supreme Court's hearing cases now where the federal government is taking people's property for, quote, wetlands, farms and things that people have owned for hundreds of years, and not even paying them when they take it. But wait, it gets worse. Charging them an assessment to take their home. So, so the same thing that our founding fathers went through and our, our ancestors went through is now repeating itself. Tyranny is here, but the people are waking up in record numbers. And I think that it's, it's – you know, taking it to get really, really bad before people finally, finally wake up. And, and thanks to you, George, you know, for decades exposing this. Thanks to Ron Paul. Thanks and, to and you, so Alex. Others. You're the you're the one that made us wake up. Well, I think we all did it together. But there's undoubtedly. I mean, you talk to tens of millions of people a day. Undoubtedly, the awakening is becoming explosive, and I think that's why the system is trying to accelerate their program, and I think it's backfiring on them, George. Maybe so. To the phones we go. Let's go to Barbara in uh, Gardenia, California. Hey, Barbara, welcome to the program. Hi, I need a little help with this one. All right. That last uh, appointment, recess appointment uh, by Obama, it seems that the congressmen were saying that they were meeting and uh, not in effect recessed when he made that appointment. And it seems like there's been an, another executive power grab. It's like he can uh, appoint, uh, put through his appointments while they're at lunch. <laughs> so I want to, you know, can you help me? What exactly how did that go down? Yes. Go yes. Ahead, Again, just as George said, they're moving on every front. So many fronts that I can't even cover them all here. Uh, both political parties have pointed out that re recess appointments are unconstitutional unless they haven't been able to get a judge approved for a year or more. Now, while Congress is in session, President Obama doesn't even try to bring the appointments to him, uh, to Congress. So if the Congress isn't approving members of the judiciary that the president nominates, the president is basically a dictator. But it's the same thing on Libya. Congress went to Obama and said, we'll give you authorization for this bombardment of Libya. And he said, I don't want it, and I don't need it. And now that same Congress has passed the NDAA transferring the War Powers Act to the president. So it is just a wild frenzy of butchering the Constitution. Sure is. Tom in Bullhead the City, Arizona, first-time caller. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, I've been listening to you for a couple of years now, and uh, just the other day, I actually saw with my own eyes the executive orders, uh, the Rex 84 information. Yes, sir. And uh, it was just, it, it, you know, my eyes are like silver dollars, you know, the the 10990, where they take control of all the transportation, the highways, and uh, 10999 take over all food resources and farms. So, you know, people out here are doubting this at all. You know, I'm, I'm an info warrior part-time. I catch you when I can on the radio, but this this is real. You know, I saw it with my own eyes. So, um, yeah, people need, need to wake up. And I just want to thank you for everything you do because I have told so many people in the last couple of years about this since I've been listening to you. And well, bless well. You. The, well, thank you, sir. These tyrants, again, as I keep saying, cannot do this in the light of day. That's why they try to sneak this stuff through, and we're here, we're here exposing it right now, thanks to George and others. But uh, again, it's not my opinion that the American Medical Journal, American Medical Association Journal, has come out and said make participation in vaccines mandatory. Um, again, it's really happening, and I think because we've had so much freedom in America. We tend to think it can happen here. It is happening here. But but here's what the establishment does. They take the executive orders that he just mentioned uh, that are uh, Richard Nixon uh, uh, era, and they say, well, those are old executive orders. What they don't tell you is those executive orders have been repackaged into other executive orders, 
and presidential decision directives. Take presidential decision directive 51, signed by Bush that bundled old executive orders and then reauthorized by Obama. It says for 